Welcome back to Esther's Breeze, where we sit back, chat, and shoot the breeze. Thank you all so much for joining us. Your constant love and support is so appreciated. I'd like to shout out a big thank you to PAX Management, a huge thank you to publicist extraordinaire Steve Joyner, to my mentor and good friend, Mr. D'Alessio, and to my partner in crime and my background techie, Mr. Fernando Renzo. <laughs> hey, thank you for joining us. So, um, Esther's Breeze is available on the Esther's Breeze YouTube channel, on Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel, and on Esther Bozinski's Facebook page. The audio then gets extracted, uploaded to all audio streaming platforms. So tonight's guest, I'm so excited for you guys to meet him. He is John Moyer. On this episode... We are having John Moyer as our guest. He is a professional hypnotist who has performed his straight stage hypnosis show around the United States and, um, our, uh, and for corporate, university, public, and private events. He's also performed around the world as a guest entertainer for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, a graduate of film school. John's combined his production skills with hypnosis to create a YouTube channel with over 200,000 subscribers focused on hypnosis and meditation content, showing people how to harness the power of their minds. Here is I'm hypnotized like all of you are right now. If any of you in your entire lives have ever lied to get out of a date, you'll sleep. <laughs> Let's bring. Hey, John. Hello, How are Esther. You? I am well and wonderful and good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. That little clip is so hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 really interesting because let's if you've ever seen a stage hypnosis show, oh, you know, I there's have. a lot of things where they, you know, you would just tell them to, okay, sleep, and I, I just kind of came up with this. This idea that you know you, you you throw something out there. If you've done this, then you'll you know you'll you'll sleep, and it it seems to resonate with with audiences at all. I, I'll do that one where it's like lie to get out of date. If I'm doing a college school, it's like if you've ever cheated on your homework. Uh, right. You know, if I like if I'm doing a corporate event, if you've ever faked being sick to get out of going to work, you know, I, I it it never never fails. No, it seems to work and it seems to really resonate with the audience and to the, you know, the performers who are on the stage with you. I call them performers, but they're actually just, you know, part of the public. So I know that you originally from New Jersey, mm -hmm. then you went to Salt Lake City, Utah, and you went to the University of BYU, which is Brigham Young University. Brigham Young University, that is correct. Right. Yes. And so you received a BA in theater and film. And afterwards, you began a career as a stand up comic. Yeah, it's, it, you know, so going to school for, you know, theater and film, and I went with, I got a screenwriting emphasis, and there was a comedy club in, in, in Provo, Utah. I guess most people don't think of Provo, Utah as a really funny place. No, it's not really. Funny in its, <laughs> it's funny in its own way. Um, and I started doing stand-up comedy. Uh, you know, I think it was probably, my, you know, my junior year. And, you know, stand-up comedy, and filmmaking, the entertainment industry, it all kind of seemed like it was in the, you know, kind of the, the, the same area. So I graduated from film school and, and you know, the, the last semester, a lot of people, maybe they're, they're applying for jobs, you know, they're getting job placement, they're going on, you know, doing big things with their, right. you know, their career. And I was sending out VHS tapes, you know, and resumes right. to all these different comedy clubs to just start booking the summer after I, you know, graduated. and. Yeah, I graduated and the next week I was, you know, I was got to be an opening act at the improv when it was up in Seattle and I just wound up going on the road uh doing stand up comedy and it was it was quite a, a fun uh experience that I just, you know, I, I loved the experience. And then of course from that, um taking, you know, the comedy chops that I had developed, I wrote a few independent uh screenplays that, you know, right. that got produced and uh continued to do stand-up comedy. And through all of that, a very interesting journey wound up um, 
in a place that I never expected, but a place that I love is, you know, being able to, you know, do hypnosis, uh, you know, because I always had that passion for, the, you know, the live events, the live audiences, but then taking my uh, filmmaking skills, my writing skills, and be able to create hypnotic content on YouTube. So what inspired you to make that transition from stand-up comic to stage hypnotist? Because I mean, that is quite a transition, though there is a similarity in both. My life was completely dysfunctional, and <laughs> I okay. found myself in a very, very dark place. See, the, okay. the thing is, is when you, when you go, when you're learning screenwriting, you know, the, they teach you that all drama is conflict, right? That's right. what's going to make a story interesting. There's not going to be any home alone if the kid's not left home alone and there's not bad guys trying to break into the house. So I kind of took that template and applied it to comedy in my, my own life where I was like, the more dysfunction and the more drama that was in my personal life, that was fodder for what I could rant about on stage. And of course. I could make people laugh on stage, but you know, it was like the, the, the sad clown, you know, behind, you know, behind the scenes, I was extremely unhappy. I had, you know, gone through a divorce. I was, had two, um, young kids, um, dating all of the wrong dysfunctional women and, and relationships. And I just got to that point where I'm looking around going, is this what it's all about? I'm, I'm not happy and something has to change. And I realized that if any, you know, you can't change what's out here, expecting that to change what's in here. So I worked on myself. And then when I worked on myself, it was like all of these um, other amazing things that I could have never imagined began to show up in my life. And as I went in that direction, and I had less dysfunction in my life and eliminated dysfunction in my life. I felt like, man, I, I, I've got nothing to make fun of because I'm happy. <laughs> so, you know, so follow the, follow the bliss and follow the joy. And that's what I uh, continued to do. And once I started doing that, I mean, just everything took off. It was just, it was an amazing experience for me. I went from, you know, driving 12 hours to do some, you know, hell bar you right. know, in, in Montana someplace, getting put up at the, you know, the Motel 6, because that was the cheapest motel for the for the club to be able to foot the bill for, um, to being flown first class, to do high-end corporate events, and then, of course, um, performing on Royal Caribbean Cruise Line and getting to go around the world. It was, and then, you know, from that, all of that then led into, you know, what I was able to create with my YouTube channel, so... That's a huge contrast. So what attracted you to hypnosis exactly? Were you watching other uh, hypnotists perform on stage or was it something were you inspired well, in another it, way? It, what, what happened? Well, first of all, when it comes to stand up comedians, there's always this kind of resentment um, <laughs> and negativity towards you know, the hypnotists, because right. stand-up comics are like, we're artists, you know, we're writing all this original material and you're just kind of getting up and you're a hack because you're, you know, relying on gimmicks and, you know, all these other people. And the thing that would really frustrate a, a comedian is I can tell you how many times you might be performing in a club and, you know, the audiences are like half full or, you know, three quarters full or whatever it is. And manager would be like, man, we had the hypnotist here last week and we sold out every show. In fact, we had to add two more shows. And you're just like, ah, you know, like there was this resentment for that. And what had happened for me was that I was booked to perform in an event. It was, you know, the series of uh, things that were going on uh, all day at this event. So I was performing stand-up comedy and the venue that I was in, you know, it was like maybe half full, three quarters full. It was okay. What I didn't realize was that immediately after my performance, they had a stage hypnotist. And I had to stick around because I had another show to, to do later. Um, but I stuck around, watched the hypnosis show. And I mean, it was standing room only for the hypnotist. And not only that, when he called for volunteers, people rushed the stage. They got hypnotized. It was fun and funny and entertaining. Entertaining, and then of course, after the fact, the hypnotist had you know CDs that he would sell. Right, stuff, the merch. Weight losses. The merch, right? <laughs> and everybody's lining up, throwing money hand over fist to buy the merch, and that was of course at the point where I, I'm like, some this is, this is. I knew something needed to change, and I looked at that and went, I can do that. 
you know, I had the stage presence. I could be right. good, you know, comfortable. I just, of course, needed to learn how to hypnotize people. That small little... Just a uh, little detail. Just a little detail, <laughs> um, which fortunately I was able to do. I went through, you know, training for that. The advantage that I had, though, is because, you know, having 20 plus years of, of stand-up comedy mm -hmm. experience at that point, I was able to go back to the bookers and the managers and the agents and the event planners and all those people that I had worked with and said, guess what? I'm doing this now. And... I was able to just start going working right away where a lot of people that are just getting into hypnosis are trying to figure out how to get a gig or they're making their own gigs, you know, booking their own venues or whatever. And it just, it, within a very short time, just within a couple of years, it, you know, it just exploded uh, for me. And hmm. not only that, the, the things that I was learning about the power of the mind um, were resonating with my own life. I was you know, couldn't just hypnotize people on stage. I was able to experience that myself and hmm. take that dysfunctional programming out of my mind and input some more positive, uh, productive programming that it worked out. That's amazing. I'm curious, how does one get certified <laughs> as a hypnotist? So when I went through for the stage um, hypnosis training, that was there's no certification, you know, for that. What I did later on, though, is to build upon that, um, I went through a certification course with the National Guild of Hypnotists, and that was about 100 hours of classroom study, and I think there was like 20 or 30 hours of outside um, hypnosis experience, which of course I was performing at the same time, so uh, you know, I was getting a lot of that. So I went through that process to get, uh, to get certified with the, the National Guild of Hypnotists, and I, I did it more so just to be able to do that for me and say I could have a nice you know, fancy um, certificate hanging, right. you know, on the wall. But um, so it was really just kind of a, a personal uh, quest for me to be able to say, hey, I've, I've done that. But it was a beneficial experience because it all applies to everything that I know about hypnosis. So I'm curious, are there some people who are more receptive to being hypnotized than others? And are there some people who just cannot get hypnotized at all? And that's a very good question. The fact of the matter is, is that we all have the ability to be hypnotized within us because we all go through hypnosis every single day. It's actually a natural operational state of the human mind. So the examples that I use, it's um, it's like when you're watching TV, you know, and you're so fixated on right. what's happening or you're reading a book, you're completely oblivious to, you know, what's happening around you or like trying to talk to my kids when they're staring at their phone screen, that sort of thing. <laughs> Or, or even, you know, like when you're driving down the road and it's like you're lost in thought and then suddenly you pull up in front of your driveway and you're like, oh, I'm here. So we go through that every single time. You actually pass through hypnosis to go to sleep. Now, intentionally triggering that state uh, is an entirely different um, thing in general. It is something, though, that, I mean, for some people, I've had people that are like, I've never been hypnotized in my life. And of course, they get hypnotized on stage. And... If it's something that you work at and then you practice, because there was a time that I ever thought I could ever be hypnotized. And when I committed to doing it and learning it, it's just like working a muscle, going to the gym, you know, you're building it up. And then, so now for me, when I get in, sit down on my meditation cushion, you know, I get in a lotus position, it's like my body goes, my mind goes, oh, this is what this means. And it automatically takes us, you know, down into that, that state. Now, whether or not, uh, somebody can be hypnotized or not there's some there's a lot of factors there because you have people that are coming up on stage that are willing participants on stage and you know sometimes people might be in their head you know I've, i'm trying too hard or there's other people watching me um so they may not be able to have that experience on stage the nice thing about doing you know me like having a hypnosis program on youtube somebody's in the comfort of their own home. They don't have to go anywhere. There's no pressure. It's just them. And that can relax them more and, and open them up more to uh, the ability to, to be hypnotized. So you mentioned your YouTube channel. I, I checked it out. It's an amazing channel. And you have, I think there's a, like over 85. Oh, yeah, there's, I think that was one of your more recent um, yeah. posts. So yeah. as, as you guys can see, it is, yes, in fact, eight hours long. So you have yeah. Some of your content actually is eight, eight hours long. In fact, most of the content uh, most is, Most yeah. of it is. I saw yeah. you had like over 80 posts. Um, and you play the first three minutes, you play sort of a, a visual, and then you leave the balance black. 
And this, I guess, allows the viewer to actually sleep. Yeah, what kind of the way that my, you know, why I wound up having eight hour programs is because of the fact that when I started my YouTube channel, um, I had had, well, what was interesting is, is that I didn't intend to be a YouTube creator. I put some right. of my digital content on there thinking that if somebody heard it on YouTube, maybe they'd want to go to my website and they'd buy the digital copy. And I wasn't really keeping track of anything on YouTube. I wasn't really paying attention to it. I just put stuff on there and walk away and never check. And um, then I realized that I had a program for sleep that took off. And so YouTube is all about finding content that's very specific to people. So apparently my channel was geared specifically towards people that were interested in listening to something as, as they fell asleep. And not only listening to something as they fell asleep, for people that are interested in having something continually play in the background while they sleep. So they, you know, they, they're able to access, you know, they, you know, they're able to relax and access those alpha, beta, theta, alpha and theta brainwave states before they drift off to sleep. Um, so they're getting the benefit from accessing the subconscious mind. But then at the same time, they just they they take comfort and uh, are able to relax and sleep through the night when there's something, you know, playing there. So that's kind of what my content all became about. People were interested in meditation or hypnosis content that they could listen to to fall asleep and have play all night. So that's kind of how that happened. And and they are very engaged because I started reading some of the comments and they love it. They absolutely yeah. love it. They want more. They, they're even giving you suggestions of yeah. some other things they're looking for and or, or different sounds that they'd be interested in. And it's quite yeah. amazing. And I don't know, I'm not going to ask you exactly how you do it because I am a voiceover artist myself. And so I was just thinking, so obviously this is not eight hours of narration. You're, there, must, yeah. there must be like a, a loop of some sort. Just yeah, curious how it's done. I've, I've done it anywhere where it's like, it could be 45 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes, 90 minutes, an hour. That is actually, you know, the original, the original content right. that okay. speaks to. And then what I do with some of the programs is that's then just looped you know, for, for the eight hours. Um, a lot of people are into affirmations, so a lot of it will be the, the hypnotic body. And then, you know, there's there's uh, affirmations for the, for the remainder um, of the time. So that's, yeah, that's what it is. I'm not, <clears throat> I've had a few people go, man, it's amazing that you just talk like that for eight hours. And yeah. no, I'm not talking like that. For, right. You know, for eight hours, but, uh, and, and of course, like I said, it was all about dialing something down to a specific niche. Um, and of course I would like to be able to create content that's not necessarily all eight hours long. So I'm in the process of putting material together for a second channel that I can have like 20 minute meditations, 30 oh, minute yeah, meditations. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. 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 So what other platforms are you on? I know that you're on Instagram as well. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, YouTube's my primary focus. Um, you know, I've got stuff on, on Spotify, <clears throat> Apple right. Music, the places that, you know, that stream. The, the thing about YouTube is, is YouTube allows me to do that eight hour content where some of the other platforms, That's true. they want it to be capped at, you know, like an hour or, you know, or something like that. But also I'll have shorter stuff that's, that's out there that uh, people can listen to on Spotify or Apple Music and those places. So I'm curious, the power of suggestion, because that's basically what it is, power mm -hmm. of suggestion while you're sleeping. Obviously, it's through your subconscious. What is the process? How does that work? The way I explain it is, you know, if you look at the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, there's kind of a barrier between those two things, and it's called the critical faculty. And it's kind okay. of a firewall that protects the subconscious mind, <clears throat> excuse me, because the subconscious mind is essentially where our programming is. It's our entire operating system. So the analogy that I use is if you think of the critical faculty as the bouncer in front of the nightclub with a red velvet rope who determines who gets into the club and who doesn't get into the club. So what's happening with hypnosis is you're basically distracting the bouncer with the red velvet rope and you're sneaking people into the into the club, or in this case, the subconscious mind, sneaking that information in or those suggestions into the subconscious mind where, where it'll pick up on it. That's so interesting. Many, many years ago, I went to a hypnotist to help me um, with my migraines. I've been a migraine sufferer since I was 26. And then he gave me some tapes to take home and to do some self-hypnosis. And 
interestingly enough, I was incredibly susceptible, like yeah. like crazy susceptible to the point that he brought in other clients to watch me, like I guess to say, hey, look, look how good I am. Look what I do. But no, he was a um, PhD psychiatrist as well. And no, he was quite uh, world renowned. And um, but I have to say that I know from personal experience that it does, in fact, work. So, yeah, I'm and, I'm a believer. And I know and, that you can do the self hypnosis as well. Yes. Go and on. then and then you said like you're also a voiceover artist, too. right? Yes. So you're kind yes. of in that. So, you know, being in that that realm, you know, whether you want to consider it the, you know, the entertainment you know, industry yeah. where you're kind of thinking with your imagination kind of outside the box where that I find that that really is a beneficial thing to people. And and the thing mm. about hypnosis is the misconceptions is it's not a one size fits all. Not everyone is going to have the exact same reaction, the exact same response. And of course, now, now the interesting thing is, is that correlated with hypnosis, the more receptive somebody is to hypnosis is actually correlated with their IQ. So hmm. the higher somebody's IQ, the more receptive that they can be for hypnosis. That's why, you know, and I'll, I'll joke with audiences and I'll, uh, I'll tell them that. So oh, you and will. I, and I make the joke that, you know, like you always get these, like the alpha male that comes up, comes up and goes, ah, I can't be hypnotized. Like they're bragging, like they're proud. Right. And I'll be like, thank you for admitting you have a low IQ. <laughs> right. I, you I turned it around that. on them. Yeah. It's it, true, it, but it, it makes it, sense. It makes yeah. sense. It, and because it's about, you know, the person's ability to just, you know, maybe focus and, 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 you know, and concentrate. And so, you know, I could have 20 people on stage and, you know, I've had times where it's like you keep all 20 people. I have times where maybe I'm only keeping, you know, 10 people or 12 people, whatever the case may be, because obviously not everybody responds. But then even out of the group that is hypnotized, you're going to have individuals that stand out. Um, more than others, you know, what right. you might call stars of the show, because there's just something about them tapping into that experience that, man, they just, they really just pick up that ball and, and roll with it. So even while you're doing a show that if you've got 20 people on there, you know, you might have six or eight people that just really stand out and you're constantly evaluating stuff when you're, uh, you're, you're paying attention and you're looking at all these different people and how they're responding. So even while I'm working on, you know, one skit, you're observing and you're watching people and you're, and you're thinking, okay, for the next skit, this person's going to be really good. I'm going to uh, give this suggestion to this right. person, this suggestion. So it's like, you're just, you constantly have to kind of live in the present moment. Absolutely. You know, we actually have another clip that's about a minute long. And I think it was a corporate event that yeah. you were headlining. I don't know, Fernanda, did you find Yes. Yes. Notice how good it feels to play it. Actually, we're playing it hard. Play it with lots of intensity. Everybody appreciates how you're playing these instruments. It's 115 degrees, that sun is beating down. You can feel the sweat dripping down your neck. It's dripping down the front of your, your, drip, your neck. It's dripping down your back. It's 120, 125 degrees, 128 degrees. Fan yourselves, you really need to stay cool. Fan yourselves, fan yourselves. Yeah, fan yourselves. You're, this is going up to 125 degrees. Help the person at your right. Love some suntan lotion on their back. Love some suntan lotion on their back. Yeah. Oh, good, yeah. That's hilarious. I was waiting yeah. for somebody to take off their clothes. <laughs> I, you, you, ha, I've, you can have the, like some guy might want to take off a shirt. You go, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. And 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 those, you know, those are those are two kind of easy skits to do up front. Because what I, you know, I had to, when I talk about doing skits, because when you experience hypnosis and, and you're doing the show, you know, people are going to go down deeper and deeper as the show progresses. So there are what I would call heavy lifting. There's more heavy lifting that somebody can do towards the end of the show right. um, than as uh, towards the beginning of the show. So the beginning of the show, you're just keeping the stuff kind of, of simple. You're allowing them to start to tap into their imagination. So it's like you, they can imagine that they're, that they're playing an, uh, an instrument. And one of the things about doing a skit like that, especially up front, the instrument skit, because you'll have them start to imagine that they're tuning up an instrument and that, that they're playing the instrument. And then gradually, I, it'll get a little bit sillier so that they can 
you know, you can play the instrument so well, you can actually play it with your feet. Or you can play the instrument so well, you can actually play it with your butt. Now, when you're watching those people, you know, the person that gets up, man, and they're just, they're shaking their backside, they're, you know, they're wagging their butt to play that instrument. So those are some of the ways that you see, okay, these are the person... (laughs) Yeah, this is the person that's standing out. This is the person, that, and and of course too, when I, it, it, since it's like the first get into the show, if I say you 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 can play that instrument so well, you can play that instrument with your butt. Every once in a while, you might have somebody just burst out laughing because it just it's such kind of an absurd thing for them. They're you know they're they're like no, we can't buy into this. And you go okay, perfect. We could dismiss you from the stage. And those are things that you're doing to to kind of whittle that group down to the people that are. Are, are really standing out. I saw that you actually touched a few of them in the back of their neck or their shoulder, and then they just completely like flopped yeah. backwards. So what happened there? What, what is going on there? Well, one of the things that you're doing is you're creating what we would call an anchor. So, you know, when you hear the hypnotist say the word sleep and they snap their finger, you're, you're creating that anchor with them in their mind that they're knowing that this is what it means, you know, to sleep. So, and especially something like that, um, when I'm when I'm doing the, you know, the music is loud, the audience is laughing. So in that particular thing, you, you want to get right behind, you know, the people, and you know, just, you know, as I'm tapping them on the shoulder individually, uh, you know, to let them sleep. Because what what I'll do with that skit is, you know, there's I'll, I'll leave the people that are really, you know just going at it and really energetic and really energized. And then I'll go through and I just one by one by one, tell everybody to, to sleep and then leave that one last person. That's just really animated. So it, yeah, it's just a matter of just coming up behind them. They they're already anchored to the word sleep. They know what the sleep, you know, word right. means. So I can just get right behind them and tap them on the shoulder and say sleep. And they go right down. Do you see anyone on a one-to-one basis? Do you have, have a clientele of sorts? I initially, I was doing that early on um, okay. and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't my passion to do one-on-one as I was finding I could, you know, reach way more people by doing what I was doing out on, on YouTube. Um, what wound up happening though, is that my wife also went on and certified right. in hypnosis. Amazing. So she will do, she'll do, you know, one-on-one consultations with people. So in your YouTube channel, you receive what they call the YouTube Silver Play Button Award. What, yeah. what is that all about? When you, when you, with YouTube, when you hit 100,000 subscribers, um, they will send you a plaque. It's a oh silver goodness. plaque okay. with a YouTube Play Button on it. Um, so it's the Silver Play Button Award that says, this is to John Moyer for... You know, 100,000 wow. subscribers. Of course, the next level is a million. So okay. that's the gold play button. It might take me a, a couple more years to get to that point, but I'm working on it. You actually but, have 255,000. Okay, 255,000. Yeah, I, I checked this well, morning. <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, early on, you know, you're, you're just constantly looking because the first yeah, of kind course. of milestone is 1,000 subscribers, yeah. you know, to get monetized. And then the second uh, level is like 10,000 to get access to other features that, you know, that you're able on YouTube. And then the next thing beyond that is, is 100,000. So, you, you know, you're constantly looking like, did I hit that 1,000? Oh, I hit the 10,000. You know, and now it's just the point where I'm like, yeah, oh, this is how many I have? Okay, I wasn't really paying attention. No, I get it. I get it. You know, I'm on many different platforms, and I have to say for myself, YouTube is probably the hardest platform for me to grow. Maybe it's just because I have podcasts on there. Maybe, you know, in order to grow, I need to take another approach. But I find it very challenging, so kudos to you. Well, and, and for what you, your YouTube channel, is that specifically just podcasts or you try to put other content on there I, as well? I do have a little bit in shorts now because now YouTube has a shorts yeah. feature. So I'm using some of my TikTok. I'm repurposing some of my TikTok, but I, the water mark is not on there. So it's it sort of seems like from the source. Yeah. And they're like really from 12 to 15 seconds long. and But they don't get much traction. So it's I find it very challenging. Whereas on YouTube, on sorry, we're on TikTok, I've done very well with the same content yeah so it's 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 and that's the, yeah the thing about youtube is is because early on i was trying to do kind of a combination of stuff i would have videos from my shows and then i would have uh you know video or the long form content of the uh, of the hypnosis programs that i was doing but you know youtube wants to know specifically what a channel is about so it's all about just 
So I just took down all of my, you know, any videos that I had uh, of my stage hypnosis show on YouTube. Ah. Some of them are on my, on my website and I just make my YouTube channel now about this one thing. And of course, you know, I said I could, it's about that long form content. So I could create a 15 minute video, but not get any traction because YouTube is gearing my channel towards people that want long form content, which is why I'm gonna create a specific channel with shorter content. Yeah, it's just all about YouTube understanding this is exactly what this is about, and we know to, to, to push that out to people. That's so interesting. I didn't even know that, um, you know, that you could have an eight hour piece of content on YouTube and that in fact that the YouTube prefers that. And it, I, I guess it helps the algorithm as well. So that that's, uh, that's really fascinating. So yeah. how do you feel that meditation and hypnosis has cleaned up your life? Cleaned up my, well, the thing is, is, you know, our, our, we're conditioned. Our brains operate based on patterns. We were looking for patterns in our life. Um, and then the brain will operate accordingly. So I was in this pattern of, you know, where I looked at dysfunction as a good thing in my personal life. So I could have fodder for what I was doing on, on stage. Um, and not to mention that, you know, there were other things that I wasn't even really consciously aware of, um, but just struggling and, you know, relationships and at the time struggling, you know, as a single parent, you know, financially and just going, how, how is this going to change? Because I, I wasn't happy. I was, I was angry and I was bitter and I was jaded. And so I was able to go into those patterns of my subconscious mind and just pull the plug on the, the connections that I had, the things that I was operating from, and then just rewire those with much more positive, healthier connections that was just changed how I was feeling, changing how I was responding to things in my life, changing you know, what I was looking at in my life. And that's, you know, you know, that's what, what, what did it all. And all of a sudden I just, I realized I'm, calmer, I'm at more peace, I'm happier, and I had a much more productive, much more energized outlook on life. And, you know, shifting that, you know, is what made the difference. And, and one of the things that I tell people is like, how, okay, you say, all right, there's things that I, you know, I don't, I don't use the word need, but I always like the word, you know, deserve. There's things that I deserve in my life or there are things, instead of the word perf want, I use the word prefer. So people look around at, at areas of their life that they're not happy about and they prefer things to be different. And I've often said, how many times have you, you know, you've been to a seminar or you've seen a movie, you read a book or something that says, this makes so much sense. I need to do this in my life. If I apply this, it'll make all the difference. And, you know, a few days later, a week later, you're back to the same old patterns of behavior again. And that's because when we see something that resonates with us, consciously, it resonates with us. Consciously, we go, our mind goes, yes, this makes sense. Subconsciously, though, it goes, the subconscious mind goes, of course, this makes sense for everybody else and not for us, because nothing works out for us. We can't do anything right. You know, we can't be successful. We've tried this or we've done that and we fail every single time. So why even bother? That's why it's so important to make that change in the subconscious mind. Because the reality of it is the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not. That's what's so interesting about the subconscious mind. So the conscious mind is able to analyze everything. The conscious mind goes, you know, this is not real. Like you're watching a movie and it's, let's say it's a scary movie or a horror movie or thriller, or whatever, and you can feel you know, those, um, those emotions inside of you, maybe you're a little, you know, you're a little tense. You, you have a physiological response to watching this movie. Now, consciously you go, this is only a movie subconsciously where all that physiological response is coming from the subconscious mind doesn't know that you're watching a movie. The subconscious mind just sees that stimuli and interprets it. So the That's subconscious true. mind thinks it's real. And therefore, because the subconscious mind thinks it's real, we have a tangible, physiological, and emotional response to that. So when it comes to terms of hypnosis, so if the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between what's real, it's not what's not. So you give the subconscious mind suggestion that 
you know, we are somebody that prefers to eat right. We're somebody that prefers to go to the gym every day. We're somebody that focuses on our health. And the subconscious mind goes, okay, that's who we are. This is real. So this is how we're going to respond. And then you have the correlating physiological and behavioral and emotional responses that are aligned with those suggestions. You know, some of what you said earlier, it was sounded very similar to a couple of years ago, it was quite big, the law of attraction, the secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a correlation to what you're saying and, and that? Yeah, now what's, yeah, what's so interesting about that is I always say that there's two types of people. There's Newtonian physics people who believe that in order to have something happen, you have to, you know, matter has to interact with matter, right? There's right. opposite reaction and, you know, so you have to physically um, interact with something to make a difference. You physically have to do something. And then the other group of people are, you know, the law of attraction people or the, you know, the quantum physics people that subscribe to the, to the, you know, the realization that everything is, is energy and, you know, physical matter in a way is really kind of illusion because if you go down on a, a quantum level, it is just energy. Right. So when I say when it comes to hypnosis, you know, it's going to benefit both people because if you're a Newtonian physics person, Okay, you're going to change your thinking, change your emotions, and change your behavior so you can go out and physically interact with um, the world around you to make a difference. Now, if you're a law of attraction person, the interesting thing about the subconscious mind is consciously, we're thinking if you put it in terms of uh, computer terms, um, the conscious mind processes about seven to 10 bits of information per second. The subconscious mind is processing somewhere around 20 million bits of information per second. So there's a lot more things happening on the subconscious level than there is on a conscious level. So if the subconscious mind is operating that much, if you're able to make those new connections and rewire that subconscious mind, then you're going to feel different. And that energy is, um, can be considered to be quantifiably measured out into, you know, the world around you and, uh, you know, influence physical matter via the energy. Now, the interesting thing, and I just found this out recently, I didn't even realize this, but, you know, the pineal gland, we have a pineal gland in, um, you know, it, at this kind of the seat of our brain. I well, did the, not know that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, go yeah, on. The, so the, the third eye, as it's called right there. Okay. So the pineal gland actually has um, calcite crystals in it that have piezoelectric properties that are akin to a transmitter, a radio that are, you know, can literally pick up and broadcast just like a radio can. And it's, it, you know, it's like when you're watching a flock of birds fly and they all are able to right. immediately move. Well, it's kind right. of the Pattern. same th that, yeah, they, they, they've got that going on there. So the human brain has this pineal gland that we now know has these properties that can pick up and receive information. I mean, you, you, if you go back a hundred years ago and you talked about, you know, cell phones, you, you, this, you know, it was science fiction. It was an absurd concept. But around us, there are radio signals, there are television signals, or radio signals, uh, or Wi-Fi, computer, whatever the case may be. Well, biologically, that same process is is happening with us and if you look at you know i could go down this whole rabbit hole talking no, about that's okay you know, i'm fascinated physics. with it but if you if you look at like let's say quantum entanglement i don't know how familiar with the quantum entanglement but i am not they have it's it's now proven that if you take subatomic particles and you entangle them and they're separated you could have one on one side of the planet and one on the other side of the planet and the way you interact with one over here is going to affect the 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 behavior of the subatomic particle on the other side of the uh, side of the planet now science still has absolutely no idea how this works but they know that it's a fact and they and they know that it happens so if you think about it as human beings we are all entangled particles right we've all come from the from the same place right so we're all these entangled particles and so What's not to say that the influence from one person over here is resonating and affecting a situation with, you know, with, with somebody else. And I, you know, I know a lot of people 
you know, they poo poo that and it's, it's, you know, it's foo foo or whatever. And, you know, to me, it's not some spiritual, you know, magic, it's, it's quantum physics. And when you come start and begin to think from that perspective, and that's one of the things, especially a lot of the themes with my hypnosis programs, and they're geared towards, you know, whether you're a Newtonian, you know, physics person or a quantum physics law of attraction person. But when we come from that place where we get out of our mind and stop coming from a, a place of expectations or judgments where we go, man, this has to happen in order for me to f you know, feel good or things have to be this way and then I can feel good or this person has to do this and behave this way in order for me to feel good. If you let that go, you let go of the parameters and the judgment and the expectation and you resonate from a place of you know, peace and confidence just knowing, hey, it's all going to be good, y you become really surprised at how things can start to work out and and show up that way yeah, that's fascinating I mean, i'm thinking of uh magnets i'm thinking of um even how sometimes we have a feeling about things and we think yeah. that, and where we just know something's going to happen or we walk into a room and we feel sort of the negative energy i mean that yeah. explains what you just said explains yeah. a lot some people are more tuned into that than other people yeah yeah and 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 the thing is is that when I talk about law of attraction, you know, the people are vision board. We're going to put this picture of a car right. up or we're going to, you know, <laughs> the thing that I always is tell people is when you, when you're looking for an outcome, let go of the imagery, let go of the visual, focus on the emotional state, how a situation feels to you because that's really what we're looking for we're all looking for an emotional state so it's like why does somebody go out and buy a new car so we can feel secure so that we can know right. when we get in the car and turn the key it's going to be able to get us to work and we're not going to be broken down on the on you know on the side of the road so I always tell people just let go of thinking and just focus on that emotional state that's the energy that resonates that's what other energy is able to you know to pick up on and um, you know, and, and understand. So it's so one of the things that I say is that circumstances don't matter. It's our emotional state of of being that matters. And the the story that I love to tell about that is um, about a year, going on to a year and a half ago. My my wife and I we bought a new house. We were looking for, we wanted to get out of my my bachelor pad right. and get into a you know uh, a bigger place, a house. So and. Now we live in in Utah, which is one of the craziest real estate markets um, in in the country. Especially the especially the town where I live in. The town that I live in, it's been branded the Silicon Slopes because we have a lot of tech companies that have moved here. So 20 years ago when I moved here, there was nothing but farmland. I mean, like the nearest Walmart was like 25 minutes away. And now, you know, Adobe's got headquarters here. Ancestry's got headquarters. Mm -hmm. There's all these tech. It's just exploded. The growth's ridiculous. So we got looking for a house, and I just I let go of what I was thinking that the house had to look like, what the house had to have, and I just focused on how do I how do I want to feel in this house? How does the house make me feel? So we you know we go out, put an offer on a you know we see the first house, we go oh my gosh this is great, we put an offer on the house, and of course you know the, the joke is is we've got all these uh, people moving from. California, you know, don't California, my Utah, right? But we got these people that are right. coming in, they, you know, and they're dropping, you know, they had this two little two bedroom house in California that they sold for a million dollars. And now they're able to come and, you know, buy a property here. So nope, somebody, you know, beat us out because there was bidding cash offer. And we're, oh man, we didn't get this house. And I say to my kids, I go, it's okay. Everything's going to work out ideally. The universe is going to show up exactly the way. So we go see the second house. Fall in love with the second house. The view was a, a, unbelievable. It was up on the mountain, looked over the whole valley, loved it. Same situation happened. And we're like, oh my gosh. And then we go see the house that we're in now. And as soon as we walked in, we were like, oh my gosh, this, you know, this has the feeling, this has the things that we're looking for. But I say to the real estate agent, I go, are there any other offers on the house? He goes, no, it's been on the market for seven days. There's been no offers, completely unheard of for you know, time. So the other houses, we were having to come in over asking price. This house, we came in at asking price, got it right away. And 
it was like amazing because it was nothing that we ever would have expected, but it was like this resonated those feelings and I let go of the expectation of the judgment of what I think, you know, and we wound up coming into a house in an area that I thought, I'm like, oh, I don't want to go live out on the west side. That's too far. And then it's like, you, I got out of here. I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect. It's beautiful. So it showed up perfectly aligned with, you know, the energy that I was putting out there once I let go of thinking it's got to have this and this and this and this and this. And then it had everything and more. Unbelievable. No, that makes an awful lot of sense. Now, we have a question that we ask every guest for this yes. season. Okay. So if you could turn back the time and talk to your 18-year-old self, what would you tell him? <laughs> well, you know, there is a theory that there is no linear time, that all points of reality are all happening at the same time. <laughs> You're the wrong person to ask. So, so I've, I've actu <laughs> I actually have meditations that I've done where I go back and, you know, tell oh, myself. Okay. <laughs> um, if I would go back. Well, now, here's the thing. Okay. I've thought about this because looking at every event that's happened in my life, it's brought me to a place where I feel like I am living in the sweet spot where I'm completely fulfilled professionally. I, my kids, my wife, my stepkids. I mean, it took me three marriages, but the third one was like, this is it. This third is time's a charm. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful. So there is part of me that thinks, well, if I go back and tell my 18 year old self, then it might screw up this timeline. Right. But then. If you come from the idea that there's the multiverse and parallel realities, right. I could stay in this timeline, but give my 18 year old self some information that would influence another timeline. Um, there are, I might say, don't go to BYU, don't go on a Mormon mission, though I have Ooh. nothing against the Mormon church. That was actually a very a good experience. Well, it was a life learning experience for me. I might say, don't marry the first wife. I would say that, but, right. um, and, but if I had to look at not changing because, you know, you, you think, well, I'm not going to listen to myself. I would go back and tell my 18 year old self, learn to understand meditation, learn to understand some of these, you know, these Eastern philosophies, because there's way more there um, than, because the funny thing is, my mom's sister, my aunt growing up, we all thought that she was like the wacko, woo-woo lunatic, because she was into all these, you know, weird, you know, new age philosophies and stuff. Right. And I look back now and I go, my aunt got it. She, she got it. And I, and I regret the fact that I didn't, you know, spend that time talking to her. So I'd probably tell my 18 year old self, go talk to Aunt Ann some more. She's got a few <laughs> things to teach her. That's a good one. No, absolutely. And it's too, we talk about the, the, you know, timeline continuum and God knows how many Star Trek episodes I've watched. I know. That, that talk about, and they still do, even the new Star Trek episodes talk about that. I think we're all fascinated with time travel. We're, but, we're, we're fascinated by time travel and we're fascinated by this idea of the multiverse. Right. Um, yes, that as well. You know, and I, I think there's something there. Um, <laughs> You could be right. But 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 one of the meditations that I do is, you know, having somebody go to a, a, a you know, a previous point in their life. And, you know, if you if you see yourself changing that moment in your life, even if it's in the mind. Right. So if the you know, because the mind can tell the difference between what's real and what's not. So if you have somebody that had a, a, a traumatizing situation earlier or something that they regret or whatever negative emotion is surrounded by that, you know, you can go into the mind. And you can create that in the subconscious mind and eliminate that and then, you know, be able to take those qualities that you, you know, would prefer to have now versus, you know, whatever negative situation, you know, that you went through, you know, you can, so I, I kind of call that a, you know, a, a time traveling meditation. Yeah. No, and I see what you're saying. So. If someone wants to get in contact with you, if they want to hire you to do a performance, how would they go about doing that? Everything. If you go to my website, johnmoyer.com, um, okay. that's got all the portals to get me into my social media. But the, you know, the big place to find me is, is on YouTube. Just look up John Moyer, John Moyer hypnosis on YouTube, and you can find me there. And it's pretty obvious. There's, there's really two John Moyers. There's me. And then there's John Moyer, who is the bass player from the heavy metal band Disturbed. Um, oh my goodness, I, you're right. Okay. You're right. And, <laughs> no, it just hit me. And okay. It, what's so funny about that, it was like a couple of months ago, I looked down at Twitter and I get this notification that says, George Lopez mentioned you in a tweet. 
and I'm like, George Lopez mentioned <laughs> me. How did we know you? So I, I open it up, and I sure enough, it is the George Lopez, comedian right. George Lopez. Right. And he wrote, right. John Moyer about to take the stage. Well, it wasn't me. He apparently <laughs> was at some venue where right. John Moyer, the bassist, was going to come out. And I said, George, thanks for the shout out. I no, appreciate seriously. it. But you're, you're getting us confused. But um, yeah, I'm I'm not the one with the long hair playing the bass. I I hear you. Okay, so guys, you can contact him via his YouTube channel. We have it posted right here, and we also have it in our description on our YouTube channels as well. All your links. Thank you so much, John. You have been amazing. I've learned so much, and I'm going to be listening to many of your uh, posts that you have up because they they're they're actually quite amazing. I have to say, I started I listening that. to them and. Just, They're just think so of me well coming done. up behind you, going sleep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Esther. I appreciate it. Absolutely, my pleasure. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back June second with independent filmmaker, actor, writer, and director, Mr. John Anthony. And for now, we thank you for tuning in. Take care. 